Hi everyone, this is Top 3D Shop, and in this video, we will tell you about quite an interesting 3D printer by Creality, Sir Moon D3. Creality 3D has been in business since 2014, producing a fairly diverse range of 3D printing equipment, mainly for the hobbyist segment. In the early years of development, it gained its popularity with products such as Ender 3 and CR10. In addition to FDM machines, the company's production capacity allows it to produce resin 3D printers, industrial 3D printers, electronics for their controls, 3D scanners, and consumables for printing. During these nine years, the company has earned trust due to the quality of its products as well as innovations. The Sir Moon D3 FDM printer belongs to the category of fully enclosed 3D printers designed not only for the enthusiast segment, but also industrial scale tasks, thanks to its characteristics and reliable design. The main specifications of the device are as follows. Build volume of 300 by 250 by 300 millimeters and printing accuracy of up to 0.1 millimeter. Print bed heating up to 110 degrees and the hot end up to 300 degrees Celsius. Direct extruder with high performance cooling and possibility of installing a hot end for high temp materials and composites. Auto bed leveling. Control via 4 inch touchscreen and computer network with wired or wireless connection. File upload via USB drive or network, camera to monitor the printing process, two integrated air filters with PM0.3 particle filtration. The Creality Sir Moon D3 is shipped in a heavy cardboard box weighing over 50 kilograms. Upon opening, we can see two steel build plates with different surfaces, one with PEI coating for demanding materials, the other with PC for more ordinary plastics. Next comes a quick start guide with a service card. And in the printer itself are a power cable and an external spool holder, one part of which is by the way printed, a case with tools, parts and consumables, a spool of proprietary PLA, as well as an acrylic cover. The box is divided into three parts, which makes it easier to reach the contents. Remove the lid, the middle part of the box, and you'll get to the printer standing on the pad. The case mentioned above contains all the necessary tools to operate and maintain the 3D printer, a mount to install the external spool holder, a brush to clean the debris in the chamber, glue stick, lubricant for the guides, an adapter cable for the USB connection, and a hot end to work with engineering materials. Let's look at the design and structure of the Sir Moon D3. The frame is built using several metal working techniques, which makes it really robust. An 8mm aluminum milled plate is located on the top, with four aluminum profiles around, and the bottom and rear are made of sheet steel. The entire frame is lined with ABS plastic, making for the futuristic design of the device. The unit has a front and side door with a fixed window on the left side. When printing in high shrinkage materials, the one-piece acrylic cover is installed on top. Both cover and doors close tightly without any gaps through which the heated air could escape, which helps keep the internal temperature favorable to high shrinkage plastics. The XY mechanics are based on the MakerBot kinematics, its disadvantage appearing to be the weighting of the X-axis with a motor. Still, it is one of the simplest and most reliable structures for an enclosed 3D printer, plus it is just as seriously designed here. The 12mm Y and 10mm X guides are made of stainless steel with a hardness of 60 HRC. The carriages and axle mounts are cast from aluminum, all bypass rollers are pulley assemblies on shafts mounted on flanged bearings. The pulleys are not just cantilevered, which eliminates their misalignment and allows for good belt tension. However, the width of the belts is 6mm on all the axes. While there are two of them for the Y-axis so the load is distributed, a 10mm wide belt in the X-axis would seem more appropriate. A narrow belt at high speeds and accelerations is susceptible to stretching, and this may lead to some defects on the surface of models. High torque stepper motors are responsible for the movement. The bed platform is of cantilever type. It is a solid aluminum construction, also made by casting. And the heated print bed is a milled aluminum plate, its thickness being 12 millimeters. The whole construction moves on 16 millimeter guides. A trapezoidal lead screw with a diameter of 8 millimeters and advancement of 8 millimeters per revolution is responsible for the movement. The milled plate of the bed carries magnets of different diameters attached throughout the area. They hold build plates very well, unlike magnetic vinyl. This solution ensures that the edges of the plate do not bend on the edges of the print surface when dealing with large objects. For even installation of the plates, there are special stops which simplify the placing. As was mentioned above, two steel plates with different coatings are included in the kit. The PC option is employed for materials such as PLA and PETG, while PEI is more stable and temperature resistant for other types of consumables. The print head in the Sir Moon D3 may seem bulky and heavy, but that's only a first impression because of the casing, which hides the direct drive design. Here, Creality utilized the well-proven Sprite extruder with a geared feeder, combining it with the bimetal heat brake. Feeding is performed by dual drive gears. 
This print head excels with highly efficient cooling by means of 5015 radial fans, both for the heat break and models for which it's double sided. Another thing increasing the size is a switching board for peripherals to the flat, flexible cable, which makes it easy to replace any malfunction part or install the hot end for composite materials from the kit. On the one hand, with this cable there are no wiring harnesses dangling and rubbing against the top. On the other hand, such cables are made by metal spraying method and do not inspire much confidence, but time will show if there will be any problems with it. For leveling the bed, there is a proprietary CR touch calibration sensor. The whole control section of the electronics is placed in the back of the printer and provides free access after removing the steel cover held by four screws. Here we can see a proprietary control board with the 32-bit controller. The Z-axis driver operates in a noisy spread cycle mode, so the work of the 3D printer is accompanied by a soft hiss with changing tone. The choice of such a mode is due to a quite heavy platform, which requires a high torque, and this is achieved just in this mode. Also, the print bed parks at the maximum coordinate point, which is convenient as it is always down and freely accessible when idle. But it takes extra time for it to move down, and make sure not to leave anything under. The air filters are accessed by removing the upper part of the steel casing. A 4-inch touchscreen is used as the interface for control and output, apparently D-Win since Creality equips a large number of their 3D printers with these displays. It triggers an auto shutoff function after 5 minutes of being idle and is activated again by touch. The other electronics are standard and reliable as usual with Creality, flexible cable channels, filament runout sensor, optical end stops. There is a backlight which can be switched on via the menu with the last selected configuration stored in the memory. The side door is equipped with a limit switch triggering a pause if a print job is being in progress. This feature can also be disabled in the menu. All the fans are turned off when idle, so the printer, being not particularly noisy as it is, is completely quiet after a job has been completed. As for innovations, we can note a separately installed proximity sensor on the print bed and a rubber nozzle cleaner. Now, let's move on to getting the printer ready for operation and also check how these things work. After removing the protective films from the surfaces as well as special clips which serve as access retainers for transportation, install the PTFE tube. It is noteworthy that its size is 6x4 mm, not the usual 4x2. Such a tube causes less resistance to the filament which is good when printing with soft materials. Filament spools are installed on the right side of the chamber on a holder with rotating shafts. Also, there is a possibility to install an external holder if necessary. As it turned out during assembly, the printed part from the kit is a stop to prevent the spool from coming off. The Sir Moon D3 is selectively shipped to the market with a certain power voltage and type of connection, so there is no need to check the power supply mode switch. In fact, there isn't any. After the first power-up, the display menu will prompt you to select a language, followed by the bed leveling procedure. The whole process is accompanied by notifications and indicates if user intervention is required. For example, the screen shows which nut, in which direction, and by how much to rotate. It is convenient and easy. After that, the nozzle will heat up to the average operating temperature, go to cleaning and then parking on the Z-axis using the sensor on the platform, followed by a 20-point level calibration with a 5x4 grid. Oddly enough, this is done without heating the print bed, although readings might differ depending on the temperature. The procedure takes no more than 10 minutes. To prepare models for printing, it is necessary to install the software. The 16GB flash drive from the kit contains the necessary documentation, prepared test models, and the slicer itself. At the time of this video, it is version 3.12.2.31.88. The slicer has the model of our 3D printer, we only need to add it in the settings. The software offers all the necessary profiles for materials by Creality, but that doesn't mean that it won't work with third-party filaments. Each of the profiles can be edited or new ones can be created. You can also switch to Expert Mode, which offers even more settings in the profile. In general, the program's interface is very similar to that of the popular Cura Slicer. The software also allows downloading 3D models from the Creality Cloud. There is no need to download the model on the disk in the first place, you can import the file directly onto the virtual print bed for slicing. Since the printer uses the Marlin firmware, it supports G-code files prepared by popular open-source software, such as Prusa Slicer or Cura. The only disadvantage is, it will not show the preview of the job on the screen. In the Sir Moon D3, Creality tried to combine reliable mechanics with modern electronics. 
So it is possible to control and monitor the print process via network. A wired connection is provided with the Ethernet port on the back of the device, as well as the Wi-Fi option, for which it is sufficient to enter the menu, enable the network function, connect by selecting an access point, and enter the password. The IP address under the access point signals the successful connection. The device will automatically detect the Creality Print Slicer. Through the corresponding menu section, you can monitor the printing process via the built-in video camera, toggle heating and the cooling fan for the model, change the print speed, download models for printing, including those selected from the cloud, configure some settings while the job is running. The functionality is adapted to manage several 3D printers at once, which makes it possible to create a 3D printing farm. All of the above can also be done through the mobile app, except for model preparation, unless the user finds a model for this particular 3D printer or loads them himself. Finally, let's proceed to the actual testing of the Sirmoon D3, starting with the standard model indicating that a 3D printer is fully serviceable and ready to use. The calibration cube from PLA matched the dimensions and was printed out great. Our second task was to get the machine on its feet. During the delivery, the two plastic feet that are screwed to the bottom of the printer were broken off. Ten minutes of modeling, about the same time of printing, and the job was complete. The feet were printed in ABS+. Next, we decided to try a more complex task and picked one of the most popular art models from the well-known website Thingiverse. For this original coiled rope container, PLA wood by Arion worked just fine. It took a little over a day to print this large mug. The result is not quite perfect as the walls of the model have overhangs at an angle that the cooling cannot manage, but overall the model turned out very well. By printing a large model in classic ABS, we tested the ability of the passive chamber to maintain the necessary microclimate for printing with high shrinkage materials. The object was a turntable housing. The edges of the model were not bent by shrinkage, the PEI coating held the model well for all 15 hours of printing, and the product itself, despite the high polygonality of the circumference, turned out just impressive. One of the reasons for that was also the preparation of the material for printing, namely drawing. Medium hard TPU was no problem for the Sir Moon either. No changes were applied in the printing profiles, but note that some soft materials may refuse to go through the filament end sensor, so it's better to mount the spool on an external holder. Or you can thread the filament this way, past the sensor. Before we move on to printing with composite materials, it is needed to install the steel hardened nozzle from the kit. The included hot end is exactly the same as the default one. This is a spare. It was not specified, so we found it out when trying to replace it, because usually the manufacturers install a hot end with a Teflon tube to the nozzle. Light materials like PLA tend to not be stable on such assemblies, resulting in clogs, but not with Ceramoon D3 thanks to the good cooling of the heat break. The hardened nozzle has a diameter of 0.6 mm, so it should be taken into account when preparing models in the slicer. Such a size is conditioned by the possibility of fractions in composites, which can clog a standard 0.4 mm nozzle. The quality of printed corners and small elements obviously decreases, but these materials, in addition to their high strength and durability due to the mixed components, are less prone to stretching and shrinkage. The surface of products made of such materials looks monolithic and original. First, we tried Creality's proprietary CRPLA carbon. The model is a desk organizer for stationery and tools. Next came carbon fiber filled ABS, which was no problem either, even at a speed of almost 100 mm per second for the infill, with 60 mm per second used for the outer walls. The parts came out with acceptable quality. PACF is probably one of the most popular materials for industry. The carbon fiber reinforced nylon is characterized by durability, high tensile strength, chemical resistance, and withstands relatively high temperatures. We utilized it for a product with thin walls where they need to be strong and able to withstand mechanical stress. And here we decided to try and change the hardened nozzle with the 0.4mm one so that the small elements would be printed out well. It is like an exception, which one might go for when printing in composites. Let's draw a conclusion. In our opinion, the Sirmoon D3 combines in itself reliable and time-tested solutions with high-end features making for versatility and allowing it to be used both by enthusiasts and for industrial tasks, including 3D printing farms. This is Top 3D Shop with the in-depth review of the Creality Sirmoon D3 FDM printer. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments below, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. See you soon!